Welcome to Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. And here on this Saturday afternoon, we are in Ames and from Hilton Coliseum at Senior Day in Oklahoma State takes on Iowa State. Well, DeAndre Kane, Melvin Edgem, two of the seniors for the Cyclones, big game right here. As we check out the standings, Marcus Smart and the Oklahoma State Cowboys looking for a win to draw to 500 with a victory. They beat 9 and 9, Kansas 10 straight regular season titles, and Iowa State at 10 and 7. Hi everybody, thanks for joining us. John Chambi alongside Fran Priscilla. This game kind of the epitome of what this league has been this year. It should be a fist fight here today. Absolutely. Two teams that were ranked in the top 10 early in the year now positioning themselves for the postseason both next week and the NCAA tournament. Great matchups, John, all over the place. All right, let's check out our starting lineups now. And first, for Travis Ford and Oklahoma State. Here's the visitors lineup. Markel Brown, Phil Forte, Marcus Smart, three guard attack. It's LeBrian Nash and Kamari Murphy up front. Meanwhile, for Iowa State, the mayor, Fred Hoiberg, he goes this way. Monte Morris, the freshman, DeAndre Kane, Dustin Holt, George Deang, and Melvin Edgem, one of the leading candidates for player of the year in the Big 12. Marcus Smart and Oklahoma State, they have won four in a row since he has returned from suspension. Meanwhile, Iowa State has dropped its last two. They win the tip for underway. Well, Oklahoma State will play man-to-man, -man, as I mentioned earlier. Lots of really good offensive-defensive matchups. There's the lob. There's Edgem, and he puts it in. Not a surprise, John, that you run your offense through the end. He's the only post player in the Big 12 in the top 10 in assists. Both these teams very good offensively. Keep an eye on Phil Forte, who just dished off to his high school teammate Marcus Smart. Murphy. And LeBron Nash pulls down a rebound. Watch the double teams on Nash. Nice look inside. Well, no call there as Murphy wasn't able to convert. And Iowa State the other way. I don't know if it's by design, but Smart guarding Edgem. Good go for Nia. And then they will get a foul. That'll be on Dustin Holt, his first. Travis Ford, sixth year as the head coach at Oklahoma State. What a wild run this year has been. They had lost seven in a row until the return of Marcus Smart. Obviously, that incident at Texas Tech, part of the headlines of the season. Now playing really good basketball, especially with Forte in the starting lineup. Phil Forte with the basketball, one of the top three-point shooters in the country. Smart's three would go. And Morris pushing the basketball as they settle in to their half court. Feed intercepted, a steal by Marcus Smart. And then Brown weaves inside and lays it in. Smart guarding Edgem, so it is the matchup that Travis Ford will start on. And Smart, John, honestly, can guard any position, any player in the conference. Let's see how that matchup goes. Niang on Murphy, left hand, and that one in and out. Niang has been in a shooting slump last two plus. Five of 27. Forte, hesitation, spins it home. He's done that more and more this season. As the season's gone on, they chase him off the three-point line, and he drives it to the rim. Payne steps back, and the three will go. Coming off that game in Stillwater, where he went for 29, 10, and 9. A triple overtime game. Iowa State picking up a win. First win in Stillwater since 1988. Smart of three. And he answers. I think the game plan is going to be to give Smart that jump shot. They'll put a lot of pressure on Forte and not let him get open. Monty Morris did a good job in the first game. Niang can't hit. He's a little frustrated. Nash backing down on Edgem as they move the basketball. Smart again. 
again. And that one an air ball. He's only 29% from the year, for the year from three. Blows my mind that he does that, really. But on the other hand, Kane matches that air ball. Maybe it's a little windy inside. Well, there he is, fourth year as head coach, Fred Hoiberg. What a great job he's done relying on transfers in large part to boost this program's success. A former star here in Hilton Coliseum, a star in Ames. Not a bad NBA player as well over 10 seasons. Nash miss pulled down by Morris. Edgem not able to hit. Right now, both defenses have been solid, forcing really basically to your weaknesses. I don't think Travis Ford minds that contested jumper by Edgem. Fred Hoiberg doesn't mind if Marcus Smart shoots threes. Brown a catch and shoot. Well, Markel Brown, we've documented throughout the year how his career, he's really grown as a player. Well, it really has, John. And most impressive this year is how much heart he's played with. And a lot of minutes in the absence of Smart for three games. David Edgem plus one over to the line. Good ball movement by this Iowa State team. One of the best passing teams in the country. Inside out. Three. The call on the floor was no field goal. We go to overtime. Lord locks it down. Let's play three overtime. For the three, Morris. Yes. Nash has got it. Fade corner. Iowa State upsets Oklahoma State in triple overtime. Well, Fran, you were there for that game. You and Brent Musburger called it. That was kind of a wild one. It was a game that Iowa State led for a pretty good chunk of and they ended up prevailing but it was uh, it was as entertaining a game as a fun absolutely a lot of great matchups a lot of great performances that night guys like Kane and Smart and Nash and Edgem Naz Long hit a big three at the end of the second overtime lots of heroes both ways that night so 10 7 here in the early going Melvin Edgem to the line Picked up his 1,000th career rebound just a few moments ago. 1,500 points and 1,000 career rebounds. We're the fourth player in the history of the Big 12 to accomplish that. And Niang picks up that foul. Niang's 5 of 25 in the two road losses at Baylor and Kansas State. Off to another slow start today. And Fred Hoiberg's team cannot afford that. Good look at it. 
Well, his buddy found him, and he's going to knock those down most Absolutely. of the time. Absolutely. Excellent design play, too. Smart's penetration took everybody to the level of the ball, and that allowed Forte to come off that screen. The A. And that'll go. Yep. You can see his body language, too, John. A little bit of a relief right there. Missed some easy, easy opportunities to pay off. It's interesting, though, when he misses, they aren't bricks. No. It's always a soft touch that's rattled, you know, boom, boom off each side of the rim and then falls out. Well, you watch 300 hitters all year, right? Sure. Go in the slumps. Yep. Sometimes they hit, hit the ball on the nose right at the shortstop. Payne goes left hand. And it drops for him. He's got that old. He goes about 35 miles an hour. You're deep in the horn and have him get out of the way. <laughs> okay, lost the handle, gets it back. Smart down, flips it up in the lob, the throw down by Murphy. And that was started because Forte really did a great job of driving baseline and Really changing the rotation of that defense. Cowboys with a win would move to nine and nine in league play. Remember, before this four point win streak, they've lost seven straight. Game win streak trying to make it five with a win on the road in a tough environment. Forte missing. A challenge that time by Niang. That would have been a good place for a shot fake and a slide to the left. Niang, good look at it. And buries it. And that confidence going. Why not? He's in Hilton. Cyclone basketball. A good job by Niang right there of giving ground on the drive. He was legal, backed up. Markel Brown dribbled it off his foot. It's a one point game here in the early going. Matt Thomas and Naz Long checking in for the Cyclone. Rejection there by Smart. Ryan Williams up ahead. Markel Brown is fouled. And they get DeAndre Kane with that one. Well, Smart's got a steal early, and now the block. Take a look as he comes from the weak side, John. I think Marcus Smart is the best defensive player in this conference. Wiggins has had a good year, but this guy can guard all five positions. Since he's come back in the four games, he's averaged 18 points, just about seven rebounds, six assists, five steals. And that's per game. Five steals per game. It's hard to do. Yeah. You know, he's got great defensive awareness. We've watched it for two years. Twelve sixteen mark, and it's the Cowboys on the road by two. And Lake Hammonds in the game for Oklahoma State. Remember, besides Smart being out with the suspension, they also lost Michael Cobbins earlier in the year to that Achilles injury. And then Stevie Clark dismissed from the team. Inside edge it would go Nash the board. Taylor rejected by Edgen. Kane up ahead. Kane lays it in. That time Forte got himself in trouble, but credit Edgen with a really good defensive play. Welcome to Hilton Coliseum, and here on Senior Day in Ames, a great atmosphere. And things tied up 16 apiece. The Cyclones and the Cowboys. And they get a walk there. 
on Matt Thomas. Well, the Cowboys have won four straight. Meanwhile, Iowa State, they dropped their last two. And we welcome you to Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. And inside Hilton Coliseum in Ames, Iowa, it's Oklahoma State and Iowa State. Check out the standings in the Big 12. Kansas, 10th straight regular season conference title. Iowa State trying to finish the year at 11 and 7. Meanwhile, Oklahoma State trying for a better seed in the Big 12 tournament and a better seed in the NCAA tournament. Hi, everybody. John Chambi and Fran Fraschilla. This battle is really what this conference, Big 12, is all about. You could argue top to bottom the best depth, the best conference in the country, and so far it's uh, it's been kind of a war out. Well, you're right, John. It's been electric in here, and think about it. Both teams were in the top 10 early in the year, now fighting for postseason post positioning. Lots of great matchups in this game. Seven of the top 20 scores in the Big 12 are in this game today. A lot of fun in Hilton Coliseum magic all right speaking of fighting we've got ourselves a one on one matchup that's kind of a heavyweight battle if you will well that first matchup the triple overtime game back in early February was one for the ages you see the tail of the tape right there two of the more physical guards in the country really important to their teams Kane and Smart went back and forth all night often matched up against each other neither one uh, gave any quarter at all Take a look now. Kane, Smart, back and forth. John, this was a, as you call it, boxing match that went right 15 rounds, maybe 18 rounds. And this guy. Who's the winner? DeAndre Kane in a split decision. All right. DeAndre Kane, what a performance that was. 26, 9, and 9. Here in Ames, Iowa State using a 9-3 run. We're tied at 16. And this has been one of the great environments in the Big 12 for a long while. All right, so here's what you missed so far. Marcus Smart knocking down a three. DeAndre Kane, nice move here. Absorbs the bump with his left hand. And then in close. Amari Murphy getting the toss from Marcus Smart. 16 apiece, and Marcus Smart will sit for the first time today. Well, it's, we had a great senior day atmosphere as well for Melvin Edge and DeAndre Kane. A lot of emotion in this building today. Yeah, the fans really responding to Melvin Edge. Forte uses the dribble, and Murphy with a big rebound. A good shot take by Forte. Rebound pulled down there by Long. He spins inside, short on the shot. Oklahoma State basketball. Niang, as we mentioned earlier, John came in on a 5 for 25 Schneid. Missed a couple early, then made a couple. But they need his scoring inside because it's a great compliment to Edgem and Kane. State has missed six straight field goal attempts. Make that seven. Yeah. That's part of his game. And remember, Iowa State does not mind hoisting up a lot of threes. This team. Under Fred Hoiberg, the four seasons with the most threes in the history of the whole program, the last four. In the Big 12 and threes made this year. They get a foul on Kamari Murphy. And Marcus Smart back into the game. Well, the numbers, John, have been absolutely superb for Marcus Smart and his Oklahoma State Cowboys since returning. They're scoring about two tenths more of a point for every possession when he's in the game. And that's a lot of points over the course of a 
75 possession yeah. They got Marcus Smart with the foul. About Iowa State, they're going to go right at Smart, and they have various defenders with the offense play with, with which to do that. Smart hesitates, blocked by Nia. Thomas. And eventually, it's LeBron Nash. Way he can rebound John and go coast to coast. Nash will get a chance to shoot free throws. Now, this team, John, leads the Big 12 in transition points because they have a couple of guys in Nash and Smart that can grab a rebound, not wait for the outlet, and just push it. We've, we've watched LeBron and Nash for three years now. And even though he may not ever be a perimeter type player, that ball handling skill really comes in handy. The other thing Oklahoma State does exceptionally well, and that is get to the line. The most attempts and the most makes in the league. And when LeBron Nash is playing his game, he's doing it in close and getting to the line. I'll tell you what bodes well for Cowboy fans today in his five games against. Iowa State, he's averaging 19 points a game, so he's a mismatch problem for Fred Hoiberg's club. Justin Poles to the bench for the Cyclones. He has two fouls. As we close in on the nine-minute mark, one point game. Long a three. Good look by Monte Morris on the drive. Long but not the down. Gets it back, feeds Marcus Smart, and a two-handed stuff. That's all of Ryan Nash right there. Good effort. Stay with it, and a good find. I mean, you got to keep trying if your knee hanging is a good look at it. Well, you know, that, there's no question that they, they play the game sometimes outside in, but I think they can score inside against Oklahoma State. I think sometimes they'll sit there settling for threes, that they can get later in the possession. Okay. But they play this way all season long, so you can't fault it. Ice cold right now from long distance. Up ahead, Nash going to work on Thomas. Rejected by Edgem. And here comes Long the other way. Now Morris. Well, they had Edgem inside and they couldn't find him. He's still demanding the ball. Edge in the pull up will go into two. From the beginning of that possession, so he made the shot, he wanted the basketball. Melvin Edge in the leading scorer in this conference, his second leading rebounder. I think you'd say the odds on favorite to win player of the year in the league. We'll see. Well, he's my vote. It'll be a tough, uh, tough to pick the all conference team. I did that yesterday on Twitter. How'd that work out for you? Oh, Marcus Smart drills his second three. He made it. <laughs> Marcus Smart did? Sure he did. Uh -huh. nice pass. Oh, my goodness. That's what kind of day, what kind of stretch it's been for Nia. See, I, I, I don't like that shot. That's not his game. The open one I like, go to the rim, stop settling. Our media timeout here in Ames. And Marcus Smart, the Cowboys on the road to the lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy. Focus is the feeling of clarity and alertness. It's the feeling you get from Five Hour Energy.
I mean, hands down, the Hilton's the best arena I've been in. Hilton Magic is crazy. Cyclone Alley always comes out every game. I mean, you know firsthand, these guys are a rowdy bunch, they're a fun bunch, and they, they really make the game you know, fun for us. So it, it's been amazing playing here. I've had such a great opportunity and I've had such a great ride. I mean, it's it's uh, it's just great. It's going to be sad to see this place go. The 48 points. Now, Fran, you've seen senior days, you've been part of senior days. This is one of those moments where there's a particular senior that connects with a crowd. You could feel it when Edgem came on the court just to shoot the way the crowd responded. About 75 minutes before the tip, right? And how about playing O Canada today? which to me was one of my highlights of watching senior days. A young man who's had a tremendous impact on this program and the community. Great student academic All-America. Gain on Smart now. Smart settle for that last three. I think he's got to get to the rim. He goes left hand and he gets fouled by a dozy. So Melvin Edgem, what a career he's put together. The 1,500 points, the 1,000 rebounds. Had that ridiculous game in early February against TCU with the 48 points. The thing about that game, he scored 24 of their final 26 points. And his teammates, as he acknowledged after that game, went out of their way to make sure they fed him, passed up some shots of their own so that he could get the record. This, by the way, is 129th career game, and that is a new Iowa State record. He doesn't have the scoring record here at Iowa State. That belongs to LaFesta Rhodes. He played here in the 80s and scored 54 in an overtime win over Iowa. Kane barrels his way to the rim. He did a lot of that in the first meeting. And see, that's why I think both Smart and Kane Need to attack off the dribble, let the three point shot be their change up pitch. Good job by Morris right up on Forte. Murphy, and that's about his range, Fran. It is, he's very comfortable shooting that ball. Mari Murphy's really had to do double duty since the injury to Michael Coppins in December. Inside, there's Kane. Yeah, no surprise. This is how DeAndre Kane plays the game virtually every night. He's a stat stuffer. Teammates really like him, John, because he's unselfish as well. Nash aggressively at the rim. Couldn't get the call. Now there's a foul. Well, it's a special senior night for DeAndre Kane as well. The transfer from Marshall was immediately eligible because he graduated and he's had a huge impact on this Iowa State program, largely responsible for the 14-0 start, the championship in Diamond Head. Edgem. Two out of 12 from three so far. So long distance shooting for Iowa State has been ice cold. Oklahoma State has come in here and played with a lot of poise early. Run their offense and they're getting reasonably good looks. Shot clock winding down, Brown. Is able to knock that jumper in. You know what I loved about that possession? If you're Travis Ford, last year, LeBron Nash would have shot the three right there. And because he put it on the floor, he drew the defense to him. That opened it up for Brown. Kane is fouled and he'll shoot. Well, coming up tonight on ESPN Saturday Primetime, presented by DirecTV at 6. Battle in the Big Ten, number 12, Michigan taking on Indiana. And then at 9, number 14, North Carolina, number 4, Duke, the rematch, Saturday primetime, presented by DirecTV. Duke's been in a little shooting slump from behind the arc the last six games, only 28%. The Devils come out with a loss against Wake Forest. Deanne checks back in, Marcus Smart as well. Kane, the only one of the big three for Fred Hoiberg who's gotten it going so far today.
have four that average double figures. Oh. 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 State as well. Mason Cox padding that uh, his stats as he finishes up his fifth year, finally playing some minutes. Here is Cox handling the basketball. A really good high school soccer player, Mason Cox. Went to the same high school as Smart Forte. He was a senior and they were a freshman, but uh, their high school coach said he was invisible. We didn't even know he was a basketball player. Shot clock winding down. Brown into the paint, lost the handle. And they get a kick ball. Doug Sermon's on that. Are under four immediate timeout. That's a six point game. The Mazda halftime report how Sean Kilpatrick and Cincinnati earned at least a share of the American regular season title today. And historic win for the Florida Gators. We're going to head down to the Odo, show you how they got it done. And if you missed what Andrew Wiggins did today, you've got to stick around to see it and why it still wasn't enough. All coming up when you join me and Seth Greenberg on the Mazda halftime report. John. All right, Kevin, look forward to that. We're back here at Hilton Coliseum on senior day, Oklahoma State leading by six. And we need Seth Greenberg in the studio to start promoting how good a junior year Jawan Staten from West Virginia is having. He may be the best underrated, under the radar player in the country. You hear very few people talk about him. He's on your first team all Big 12, correct? He's on everybody, really, every coach in the league. There's DA getting it to go. Staten with 24 today in that win. Aaron yeah. Harris with 28. Uh, Staten the gate and transfer is as improved as any player you'll, you'll see out there. You know, both physically and mentally, John. Let's drop that in there as well. One more the Hill of Beans a year ago. And they go offensive foul. Kane took it in the face there for Marcus Smart. Now that might be two on Smart now. This is what we talked about. Watch Smart now clear out. Now we've seen this matchup before in that first meeting. And then the elbow over the top. It's above the shoulder, so they're going to go look at it. Remember, you can't sweep the ball through. So what do you think there? This could be a flagrant one. Now, you know, you'd argue it's a basketball play. Yes. But remember, 
Coaches have been warned not to teach the rip through through the face. Yep. That was the purpose of the rule. You go back to when Chris K Kramer took the elbow from Manny Harris of Michigan a number of years ago. Absolutely. More and, he and he clearly got him with contact. Well, and more importantly, it's the second foul. Yep. Okay, basketball play. They're going to say no flagrant one offensive foul. Check it out again. Watch the rip through. See, I think if it's early in the year, they don't they call this a flagrant one. So they say common foul. Well, I don't have a problem with that for this reason. You got two guys you everybody wants to see play. I think because of the nature of the battle back and forth, that's why it was only a common foul. But early in the year, that could have easily, and even today, easily been called a flagrant one. I'm with you. I don't have a problem with it. I would say cut inside, Edgem couldn't finish. I would say the reason that rule was created was to prevent players from doing exactly I what totally Marcus agree. Smart did. What happens if Kane's down unconscious for 10 minutes? Right. Is that still a common foul? You want to stop the ball from being ripped through with the elbow above the shoulder. So that's what he did. Yeah. Now, more importantly, Smart sits the next couple minutes. Yep. Brown able to get his hands on it after Williams saves. And a takeaway by Edgem. And then he threw it away. That was good harassment on, on defense right there. Well, doubleheader on ABC's NBA Sunday showcase. Two of the best teams in the league, one Eastern. You get the Bulls and the Heat. And then at 3.30 Eastern, the Thunder and the Lakers. ABC's NBA Sunday showcase. It starts with NBA Countdown presented by Speed Stick Gear. Boy, just as the Heat are heating up, the Pacers are in a Three game Schneid right now. They were blown out last night in Houston. Edgem tips it to himself and pulls down the board. Well, two very good offensive teams haven't been real good in the first half. Iowa State now two for 13 from the three point line. Well, and that three by Thomas John is a contested three. If you go back and look at the numbers, your shooting percentage is going to drop 20% when you shoot that kind of three versus the wide open one. No reason to take that shot early in the clock. Shot clock under 10. Brown at the rim. Throws it off the side of the backboard. Here's Kane. Loose ball for 10. Rare turnover. And Williams lays it in. Monte Morris rarely turns it over. Time out of the court. We'll take it with him. Back in Ames, Cowboys lead it by six. A rare turnover for Monte Morris Brand, who's in position to set the NCAA record for assist to turnover. Exactly. It leads to the easy basket by Oklahoma State. He'd only had 12 turnovers, John, in the last 730 minutes. That six to one ratio is uh, staggering, really, for a freshman. But great high school player out of Flint Beecher, Mr. Basketball in Michigan. A winner and one of those really outstanding young freshman guards in the conference. And Thomas stepped on the sideline. Don Daly right there on the call. That always amazes me that you don't have the kind of court awareness yeah. if you're playing in those corners that you should have. Oklahoma State calls timeout. All right, so Oklahoma State as it relates to the Big 12. A lot of people thought that Kansas and Oklahoma State would be the top two teams. Now, 
for the Cowboys, been kind of a, a furious finish. And with a win today and a Baylor loss, they can put themselves in, in better position. Here's the bracket, though, in terms of the tournament if it ended right now. Well, how about this? Oklahoma State could meet Kansas in the quarterfinals. And that's absurd when you think about where these teams were in November and December. And I have to tell you, the biggest problem is not just the, in, the Big 12 tournament is how do you seed Oklahoma State in the NCAA tournament? Are you really going to seed them on the 10 or 11 line? Seems unfair, not just to them, but the team that's going to be yeah. the 7 or the 6 seed. Well, they're playing good basketball. The Marcus Smart suspension. They've been able to rebound from that. Fran, you know, you got a chance to see them while he was out, and you felt like they really played well and played hard. They played their hearts out without him. Everybody grew up a little bit more for tables in the starting lineup. I think him coming back made them a better team, not just because of his talent, but because of the way the rest of the roster grew up. Well, two players slipping there, both Long and Markel Brown. Shot clock under 10. Forte picked up his dribble. Sager now. Forte. And he's going to shoot three free throws. Not the smartest play there from George Dia. They did a tremendous job, particularly Monty Morris, of shouting Forte that entire possession. And then watch him get bailed out right here. You see Niang switched out. Niang challenges, and player is in the act of shooting until both feet hit the ground. And Forte, a brilliant free throw shooter at 89%. He's exactly the epitome of the guy that improved without Smart, which is ironic, John, because they had played together for so long. You know, it wasn't just the sidekick routine. Well, you alluded to it earlier. One of the things that we've seen from Phil Forte, who's known as a shooter because he's an excellent shooter, but putting the ball on the floor a little bit more, when that shot outside gets contested, he's comfortable to, to get in there and either it's create his own shot or dish off. There's a rarity right there. He's been in a shooting slump from the arc, excuse me, from the foul line late in the year. It's dropped down about 88%. Clock winding down. Here's Kane. Lost the handle, and that's the way the half will end. The Cowboys will take a seven-point lead to the break, and Iowa State a season low in terms of points in this first half. Time now for the Mazda Halftime Report. We send it back to the studio. Kevin Connors and Seth Green. All right, John, Fran, thanks very much. We'll get you started with our first game of the day. Kansas, West Virginia in Morgantown. Tale of two halves. First half, everything West Virginia threw up. Seth went in. Devin Williams, part of a West Virginia team that shot 60% from the floor in the first half. He had his high game in the first half with 16. More importantly, without Embiid, he was attacking the rim. In transition, Andrew Wiggins taking it by himself. Jayhawks down 34-28. They were down by 12 at the second half. And in that second half, Remy Debo continued to heat up for the Mountaineers. Great back door right there and sharing the basketball. This is a West Virginia basketball team. The three perimeter players understand how to play the game. Extremely unselfish. And Kansas had no answer in terms of their ability to contain them off the bounce. So many open looks from behind the arc. Aaron Harris draining a three that time. Kansas went down, but it wasn't because of what Andrew Wiggins didn't do. He had 41, Seth. They stormed the floor in Morgantown, 92 to 86, despite what Wiggins did, career highs in points, field goals, free throws, blocks, and steals. 41 points tied for the most by any freshman this season. The rest of Kansas with 45 points. As we welcome you into the Mazda Halftime Report, Kevin Connor, Seth Greenberg. Great as Wiggins was, great as West Virginia was, no Joel Embiid for Kansas as well. You saw some flaws with that Jayhawks team. Well, the concern about Kansas is their backcourt, and the backcourt being Nadir Tharp. If he can manage the game, defend the ball at the point of attack. I mean, you think about Stanton and Harris. They combined for 52 points for West Virginia. You've got to guard the ball. But I'll tell you one thing I am impressed with, and that's Andrew Wiggins. Oh. 
Andrew Wiggins was terrific, and not because he scored 41 points, but more importantly, how he played. He was aggressive offensively. He was not chasing shots, but his ability to attack you off the bounce, get out in transition. And then where I really think he can impact the game is on the defensive end. His length, his ability to challenge shots and then create offense out of the defense. Wiggins is a guy to me that if he imposes his will on, on the game defensively, the offense will come. But for them to make a deep run in the tournament, he needs to be aggressive offensively and defensively. You get the sense that Bill Self might have wished he had one or two of those timeouts left. He burned them all by the 17-minute mark of the second half. And if that's a 42-minute game, I'm not so sure that Kansas doesn't make it even a little bit more interesting than they did. But great win today. Got to be impressed with West Virginia. And I love their backcourt. And all those guys are going to be back. No question about it. Meantime, Florida, the number one team in America, trying to do something that had never been done in the SEC, run the table, go 18-0. First half, Michael Frazier, the second drills a three. Gators led by as many as 22. Extremely unselfish play. The old thing about it's amazing what can be accomplished when no one cares who gets the credit. 20 assists for these Florida Gators. They play with no ego, but tremendous confidence. Julius Randle, part of a 15-0 Kentucky run, but down the stretch, too much will you get. And the Gators. Great dime right there by Casey Prather, stretching out that ball screen. 84-65, Florida does run the table, go 18-0 in the SEC. Meantime, Villanova now a chance to potentially move up to a one seed in the field of 68. 38-25 lead on Georgetown. And speaking of which, according to Joe, as of right now, the one and two seeds would break down like this. you have any problems with either side? I've got no problems with Virginia. If they win the ACC tournament, they've got a chance to claim a number one seed. No question about it. Already the regular season outright champions, despite what happens in that Duke-North Carolina game later tonight. When we come back, we'll check in on the Louisville Cardinals. Cincinnati is already taking care of business in the American how are the Cardinals faring right now? That's coming up. to the Mazda Halftime Report. Kevin Connor, Seth Greenberg in studio Cincinnati. Mick Cray, he's my American Coach of the Year. Seth, chance for the Bearcats to claim at least a share of the regular season championship at Miles Mack with other plans. Miles Mack, the diminutive guard for Rutgers. He's a tough guard because he can shoot it and beat you off the bat. Scarlet Knight so good at the rack, one point lead, but Justin Jackson, you love his game. You're talking about a senior now. Look, look how patient he is and watch how he stays in the play. This is an old school grinded out Bearcat team led by two seniors in Jackson and Sean Kilpatrick. Well, Jackson, a JYD, right? A junkyard dog. I love the junkyard dog. Great backdoor right by Sean Kilpatrick. 
This team might be offensively challenged, but they check you every single possession. 70 to 66, the Bearcats take care of business. Meantime, Memphis knocks off the Mustangs of SMU. Good late season win. Memphis finishes the regular season of American Play 12 and 6. All right, we showed you Cincinnati taking care of business. Louisville a chance to own a share of that regular season title. First half, Luke Hancock drilling a three. You told me this is Louisville basketball that you've seen in the first half. What do you mean? Louisville's active and aggressive defensively, forcing 10 turnovers, and Russ Smith doing a nice job of getting in the lane. He doesn't have to score to be effective. He's getting in the lane, drawing a second defender, five assists, and Montrez Harrell does a great job of getting out in transition. You talk about defense leading to offense, and here is that transition. Terry Rozier, the lay-in. Louisville beating up on UConn at the half, 30-18. to 18. Game of the day to this point. St. John's and Marquette. Final nine seconds of regulation. Johnny's up by two. Orlando Sanchez, front rim. Marquette the rebound. Who do you give it to? How about Todd Mayo? Used to be Junior Cadugan and Vander Blue. Unfortunately, those guys have left. But Buzz Williams, this is the type of year. Such a fine line between winning and losing. You got to have a guy at the end of the game you can play through. We go to overtime. Tied at 81. Mayo. Turns it over, Rashid Jordan makes it happen, so we go to double overtime, tied at 81. Just over a minute to go, D'Angelo Harrison, Steve Lavin needed this, coach. The fighting Steve Lavin, I'm sorry, it's a good shot, good shot, bad shot, bad shot, bad shot, good shot. Let's get back on defense. Bad shot till it goes in, then it's a good shot. And then Derek Wilson to win it on the baseline. Does not happen. And the Red Storm donning the blue. Go into Milwaukee and come away with a 91 90 winning. You got him in? You got him in? That's a big, big victory. According to our Joe Lenardi now, they're one of the next four out, but that victory today could change things. You think that they're it in? It keeps them alive. Let's put it that way. Big East tournament should be good. At Madison Square, it could be some home games for the Johnnies in that Big East tournament. This halftime report is presented by Mazda. Conviction, creativity, courage. This is the Mazda way. This halftime report is presented by Mazda. 
conviction, creativity, courage. This is the Mazda way. What is essentially a bubble game between Missouri and Tennessee, maybe an elimination game coming up. Just over an hour away, Jordan McRae and the Volunteers set to take on Missouri. Well, look at the notable games today, and we can't have any conversation about notable games, Seth, without talking UNC Duke. Who wins tonight and why? I think Duke wins the basketball game. They do a better job on the defensive glass. They find a way to attack that 1-3-1 one, one zone by putting Rodney Hood in the middle of the zone, make him a facilitator, and Duke wins the game. And they never lose a Cameron, right? They can't win two games, lose two games in a row. Never lose a Cameron. Marcus Smart, a team-high 10 points for the Cowboys. Second half action from Ames, Iowa. Coming up. Welcome back to Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. We get ready for our second 20 minutes from Hilton Coliseum with Oklahoma State leading by seven. Our folks, John Chambi, Fran Priscilla, a first half that saw Iowa State go two out of 13 from the three-point line. But really the story in the first half, Oklahoma State very efficient offensively. Really have been, John. Remember, these two teams love to run and get out in transition. Oklahoma State's come in here today and controlled the tempo. And it's been primarily because very good ball movement. 11 field goals, 10 assists, finding the right man at the right time. And uh, on the other hand, Iowa State for some offense. How about this? Iowa State does not have an offensive rebound so far in this ball game. Well, that makes it difficult when you're shooting 37% from the floor. Miss, and you're done. Let's see if they can get Melvin Edgem a little bit more involved. But Cowboys start with a basketball to begin the second half. And immediately a foul inside. And that's going to be on Edgem at his first. Well, they were trying to post Nash up inside first play of the second half 
That's a play they had a lot of success with in that triple overtime game. And Nash was just absolutely outstanding in the paint. They're going to play through him again, John. Okay, finding space. Gives to Brown, and he drills that three, and all of a sudden, the Cowboys come out. They're up by 10, biggest lead of the game. More good ball movement that time. You talk about utilizing a possession. That's exactly what the Cowboys did. Not unfamiliar territory for the Cyclones. Nine different times they won a game with trailing oh, yeah, by seven or more in that spot right here. Now remember, this possession started out trying to get the ball into Nash. Watch the swing of the ball. And then watch Forte drive it. The kick out for the open three, and Brown knocks it down. Right back to Nash if they can. Nash with the edge of him. Good ball movement, smart, pretty good look at it. And buries it. That is all LeBron Nash right now, drawing the extra defender. And a great job by Brown of rotating and moving that ball. That's the kind of open shot Marcus Smart can hit. Neang can't hit. Two out of 14 from three for the Cyclone. That's a four shot, John. Bad luck, too, because it went in and out. Nevertheless, forced. I love the way Oklahoma State is running their offense right now. Job by Brown after Forte fired up an air ball. Shot clock down to six. Brown rebound yanked down by Hole. Smart did a good job of getting in early. Now he can't pick up that third. Neang gets a second chance at it. Puts it home. Iowa State has only had three players score, Niang, Kane, and Edgem. They're big three. Fans looking for a little magic right now. Smart steps back and hits another. His fourth three-pointer of the game. John, that stretch he went through where he was shooting threes, not making them, that was all because he was taking tough ones. He's getting good, work, good ones today. Smart to Murphy, and they get an offensive foul. And that was a poor decision by Smart for this reason. He dropped the ball off to Murphy. Murphy had nowhere to go but straight at the rim with the defender set. He had Forte wide open on the wing. I take my chances with Forte than Mark than uh, Kamari Murphy right there. Well, the other part of it as well. Niang didn't have a chance to get set for Smart. He did have a chance to get set for Murphy. Exactly. Edge him inside, high off the glass, and it'll go. The lead is a dozen. As the Cowboys are trying to make it five consecutive wins in Big 12 play. And there's Smart again, he's feeling it. Great ball movement, excellent screening inside, and then Smart just tight curled at a nice pass. That could have been a charge. Cyclone really out of sorts offensively, and there's a steal by Smart up ahead Nash. LeBron Nash the flush, and it's a 16-point Cowboys lead.
in aim, John Chambi, Fran Fraschilla, all Oklahoma State, and all Marcus Smart. He scored eight of the Cowboys' last ten points. He's been making the magic inside the Hilton Coliseum today, John. Really efficient game, letting the game just come to him, not forcing anything. Playing with outstanding composure. And right now, he's dominating his ball game. If this were a prize fight, I would say Smart way ahead on points at this stage. In the rematch. In the rematch. Okay. A rematch that Kane won in a split decision in that triple overtime. Nicely, as Nash smacks it away. He may have jammed his thumb. Nash is going to... Travis Ford does not want to go to his bench. I think Don Daly is going to force him to. This will be interesting because Brian Williams will come in and that'll move smart to the four. You can't see whether he jammed it or dislocated it. Niang finds Kane with the smaller Markel Brown on. Niang again for a three. And he gets one to go. Good rhythm. Good job by Kane. He baited that. He baited Niang's defender to come and help. And Niang with a little bit more of a rhythm three that time, I thought. Point game. Here's DeAndre Kane. Turnover by Markel Brown, and then Kane keeps it, keeps it. Doesn't need to pass it, no resistance, right to the rim. Well, so far in this one, it's been amazing. Iowa State, three guys have scored. When you go into an Iowa State game, the first three players you're going to talk about Melvin Edgem, DeAndre Kane, George Nian. And those are the three guys that have scored today. Exactly. That, that trio is among the three highest scoring in college basketball. Well, more college basketball coming your way tomorrow. More conference champions and women's hoops will be crowned. Start at 1 p.m. You get the Big Ten Championship, 3.30 Eastern. The SEC at 7. It's the ACC Championship and at 9 Eastern, the Pac-12 Championship. Championship week presented by Dick's Sporting Goods starting Sunday. And one on ESPN. Lots of women's basketball coming your way. Travis Ford, always very good at a timeout. Find Smart. He's got Kane on. Williams will try. And there's Hogue with the rebound. Kane pushes ahead. And Long buries a three. Lots of confidence from Naz Long off the bench. He made a big one in the second overtime in Stillwater. One more stop and score. We're going to see Hilton Magic. Smart shot contested. Here's Kane. They're on an 8 0 run. They get a foul on Edgem. So the Cyclones using the three to get back in this one. Kane, Long. And we got ourselves an eight-point game.
Well, let's take a look at today's Wendy's Wooden Watch. Grand Priscilla, here's your top three. These are my guys, John. You know what, maybe it's a senior moment, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> I went with three seniors. Doug McDermott's gonna win it running away. I saw Russ Smith the other night at SMU. It was unbelievable, six for six from three in the second half, but more importantly, these three guys really epitomize what the Wooden Award means. Sean Kilpatrick's had an incredible career. Can't wait to see the highlights from that game today. Of course, Doug McDermott, as I said, will win. Doug McDermott from right here in Ames. How about that? Played the same high school team at Harrison Barnes. Was the sixth man as a junior on that state title team in the race. How about that? Like a walk there. They didn't call it long now. Kane back to long. Big rolls it in. Defense has started to create offense for Cyclones. Couldn't have said that for the first 30 minutes, or excuse me, 25. A 10 0 Cyclones run. Brown weaving through traffic. Couldn't finish. Edge of now. Kane, Euro step. Smooth. And Travis Ford calls timeout. I thought John the defense for Iowa State for much of this game was soft. Last three, four minutes, or at least it, during this run, it's been really outstanding. And then DeAndre Kane, watch this. Whoop, whoop. Everybody's got that Euro step down now. Remember when that was a travel about five or six years ago? Absolutely. Then everybody watched tapes of Manu Ginobili. And yep. We're in about the 10th round, John, and Smart, who was winning way ahead on points, is starting to take some body blows from Kane, so we should have a fun fight down the stretch. Two very physical point guards, Kane and Smart. Both have been outstanding today. Smart will grab a seat. Marcus has a couple of fouls. Got to figure the rest won't be very long. And there's a TV timeout coming at 12, so good time to rest him. Brown at the free throw line, back to Nash. Inside, it'll go. LeBron Nash powering his way to the rim. Haven't really gotten edge of going a ton in this game. Neang to Edgem. And Melvin Edgem to the line. And if it looked like an air ball, that was a pass. When Niang spun, see the Edgem family right there on senior day. When Niang spun, watch him throw the little lob up there, knowing that Edgem was working that baseline. Something they've done time and time again. When they introduced Melvin Edgem, the student section started to chant, hang that jersey <laughs> during senior day. There you go. His coach lost on his senior day back in 1995. Edgem would like to change that script. Hogue rips down the rebound. Kane stumbling at the rim, lost the handle, but he gets fouled. Our under 12 media timeout, good one in the Big 12. Final day of the regular season. These two going head to head.
Greenberg in studio. UConn, Louisville, how about the cards getting offense set for Montrez Harrell? Montrez Harrell, he runs downhill going from defense to offense. Louisville a chance to tie for the regular season championship up 15 right now. 17-0 run, helping Wichita State jump out to a 33-19 lead. Semis of the Missouri Valley Conference tournament. And a reminder that coming up next year, Jabari Brown set to lead Missouri up against Tennessee in what Seth is calling a must-win game for both teams. John? Well, Kevin, right here, we got ourselves a 15-2 Iowa State run. And they are within three. DeAndre Kane books the first. Kane played high school basketball with D.J. Kennedy from St. John's. Matt Abdel Nass Massey on that Iowa State bench was a manager at St. John's when D.J. Kennedy played at St. John's. That was the connection that got Kane to Iowa State. And Matt now sits next to Fred Hoiberg and Doc Sandler and the rest of those guys in the Iowa State bench. Point game here at Hill. Good move. The foul is on Melvin Edgem. That's his third. Via well, Nash now playing with three fouls each. Edgem saying that Nash got away with the chicken wing. They have. <laughs> Loose ball right there. Long didn't see it. Pass deflected. It stays with Oak State. Have you noticed how good a passer Marcus Smart is in the post? You know, he's a very he's very good in transition, but Travis Ford loves to play him in the post and invite double teams, John. Play in that first meeting. Wow. Oh boy. Oh boy, that's a flop. Yeah, they missed it. You know, you just, and it, this happened on Monday night against Kansas State when Smart didn't get a call because he's the boy of Pride Wolf. Got to let that be a play on. And then Brown buries a huge three. 50 46. See, I would try to go into, I would, if Edgem is being guarded by Smart right now, I try to get Edgem posted up on Smart if I could. Let's see if he can draw that third foul on him. There it is. Edgem pushing his way to the basket. Take a look now. And I love the strategy that Fred Hoiberg just. Yeah, I don't see anything there, really. Well, Kane didn't even get around the screen to foul him, or barely did. I guess yeah, they're going to say grabbed his arm. Yeah. But I love what Fred Hoiberg just did, John. Knowing that the officials may have reacted to the crowd, he put Edgem in a driving situation on Smart. And I think that's Smart's third, is it not? Yep. Indeed it is. He has three. Nash has three. And on the other side, as you mentioned, Edgem with three. And one out of two for the senior from Toronto. If I was smart right now, I'd take the next player two off in terms of trying to do too much because he'll pick up his fourth foul if he's not careful. Nash backing down. And Brian Nash will shoot two. And they're going to get that on Edgem. No, Don Daly's going to correct it now and say it's me. <laughs> Edgem ran to the scorer's table. So Niang has three. We're going to have a little war of attrition down the stretch, John. With all the guys on the court right now with three. I 
I just keep loving the way this guy has played his junior year. Brian Nash. You know, the scowl as a freshman, I think, was misinterpreted as being a sour kind of guy. Really a good kid when you talk to him. And has become a very, very effective Big 12 player. One of the toughest to deal with in the whole post. Little, little zone today. Left hand, offensive rebound, put back. Not sure they didn't just match up and go man, but a uh, little change up D right there. Every time Smart touches it. Wow. That's going to be four on Edgem, and it's going to be three free throws for Forte. Second time today that Iowa State has fouled Forte on the three-point line. And more importantly, the fourth foul will force Edgem to sit down. Got it, got it. They are protecting the shooters this year, John. With the new rule changes, freedom of movement, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, one of the things that John Adams and the officials are really emphasizing is protect the shooter. How long does Edgem sit? Well, if the score stays within striking distance, probably to the five-minute mark, I would think Fred Hoiberg's uh, idea is that might change if Oklahoma State gets out and double digit uh, double digit lead. That fourth one was on Edgem, the senior. There's the zone. Well, they're matching up at it for sure, so it's really man to man. Long for deep shot. You know, he made five threes as a freshman, and in the first game of his sophomore year, he knocked in eight against Wilmington. On and off, his confidence has been pretty good most of the year. Neang rebounds the Forte miss. Well, the Cyclones can tie with a three. Possession arrow, it stays with Iowa State. ESPN's journey to the tourney features one of the best rivalries in all of college hoops. Coming up tonight at 9 Eastern, you got North Carolina and Duke. Tar Heels red hot. They've won a dozen in a row and, of course, knocked off Duke the first time those two teams got together. Duke, meanwhile, they've won 32 straight at home. Coming off that loss to Wake. Flips it up and in one point game. Going to learn a lot about Oklahoma State's composure the next eight and a half minutes. So far, it's been really outstanding today. You want to play this team in the NCAA tournament if they're a 10 seed? Oh, that's from way downtown. Travis Ford's team led by as many as 16 in this one. And now the Cowboys are up by just a single point as we close in on eight to go. John Shambi, Fran Priscilla. Final Big 12 regular season game for each of these teams. Big 12 tourney still to come. Last time Iowa State led this five four, and Thomas gives him a lead. Another one of those guys that started the season. Freddie Horberg worked with him after practices. Fans wanted over and back, but that ball looked like it was deflected. And it was, and Doug Sermons gave the signal it was deflected. 
great look by Nash to find Murphy. They were tied up. Nash does a really good job, John, in that post of being their facilitator. That's not uncommon. Career high six assists for LeBron Nash. The end off the window. He's starting to feel a little. Remember, 5 of 25 in the last two road losses at K-State and Baylor. And they get three seconds. They were down by as many as 16. Hilton Magic take it over. Cyclones by two. Well, the rivalry continues tonight on ESPN at 9 Eastern. Chapter 1 went to North Carolina. As far as this matchup here in Ames, Iowa State leading by two, a furious comeback by the Cyclones. 6.38 to go. John Chambi and Fran Fraschilla. Cowboys in the second half pushed the lead out to 16, but George Niang and company starting to find themselves offensively. Marcus Smart's played well here today. He really, really has, and Melvin Edgem is going to sit with those four fouls. Fred Hoiberg can be a little bit more careful about when he brings him back. Now remember, John, the Cyclone comeback is not a surprise. Nine times this year, they've come back from seven or more when they trail. A little bit of the pressure by Oklahoma State. Thomas again, this time can't hit Murphy the board. The set play they ran, that's actually a play they ran to get Nash Long the shot. Here is Nash Long. They'll set it back up, under six to go. Justin Hogue from George Nian. Timeout Cowboys. Best passing big man in the Big 12. Averages almost four assists a game. That time from almost midcourt. Found Hogue underneath. Take a look now. He's got that ball in midcourt. There's Hogue. Defense not set. And Niang with the bullet pass. He really is a unique type of player. The hands, the feet, 
vision. He's not going to overwhelm me with that athleticism, the speed, the quickness, but he's got a very soft touch as a shooter, and we've seen him distribute the ball and get others involved. Well, he's in the midst as a sophomore of having one of the great years in the history of this program. By the time he leaves, his numbers are going to be staggering. And this is a guy that played on the same high school team as Nerlens Noel and Kansas as Wayne Selden Jr. And uh, you know what? What a four-year guy, much like Edgem has been. And Niang really didn't get a lot of high looks until he verbally committed to Iowa State, and then some of the bigger programs got on him. Smart's three wouldn't go. He's hit four of them today. You know, I, I play the percentages if I were him, but he's so confident that he's going to shoot that three, but he's so hard to guard off the dribble. Niang had it stripped away, and a foul is called. I wonder who they got on that, because that think Markel Brown. Okay, so it looked like Smart got all ball, and then Brown reached in. Will be Markel Brown, and that is his first. Five team fouls in Oklahoma State, six on Iowa State. Knee in left hand, and Forte pulls it down. Cowboys have won four straight lead games after losing seven in a row, and the four straight coincided with the return of Marcus Smart from that suspension. Forte launches. As you see, Edgem sitting still with those four fouls. Everything he could to hold his ground, and Niang just plowed into him. 16 fouls on each side. That personal on Brown, his second. Niang at the line. Now, Melvin Edgem <laughs> just got up to go into the game. And now he's going to come back into the game. You know why? I bet, I bet that Fred Hoiberg didn't want to ice the shooter. He would have come in between both. I used to do that. It was, I didn't want to jinx my shooter. And especially when he's coming out of the game. You know, because subconsciously, when guys know they're coming out, subconsciously they'll miss. So they can stay in. That's the most ridiculous thing you've said to I am telling you, that is that is the basketball god. Just trust me on that one. <laughs> Guy knows he's coming out, he's missing the free throw job. But just subconsciously. <laughs> I did, I said subconsciously. Markel Brown knifing his way in, he goes left-handed. No resistance that time. This is random, but the Big 12 tournament's gonna be unbelievable. That quarterfinal round's going to be incredible. Yeah, this conference most of the year has been pretty unbelievable as Thomas steps out of bounds. I think that's the second or third time he's done that today. Cyclones at home and they leave. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy. Focus is the feeling of clarity and alertness. It's the feeling you get from Five Hour Energy.
reporter Seth Greenberg in studio. The can has officially been opened in Louisville. The Cardinals taking it out on UConn, Seth. Montrez Harrell once again running the floor. He runs the floor like a shot out of a cannon. UConn with a big hole to climb out of. Meantime, Wichita State. A lot of they, they, they're really struggling with the pressure, aren't they? Up by 19 in the semis of the MVC, guys. All right, fellas, here in Ames, four-point game. A game Oklahoma State led by as many as 16. Marcus Smart with 18 points here in this one. That ball out of bounds. Travis Ford is saying that's a foul. That's the boy who cry wolf. He's not going to get that call. And when he gets fouled, he's not going to get it. But stay alert right here because, as I said, nobody does a better job coming out of a timeout than Oklahoma State. And one, Marcus Smart. He wanted him to do a little more of that. Absolutely. That's really his game. Shooting the threes is like throwing curveballs when you have a 98 mile an hour fastball. Uh oh. And Edgem is done on senior day. Five fouls, a dozen points. Never could quite get him going. His family came in from Toronto. And now it's an opportunity for Iowa State to win this game without him down the stretch. But what did I tell you during the break? Yeah, it's an opportunity for Oklahoma State to steal this one. Yep. 20 NBA teams here today. A number of guys on the floor getting good looks, including the guy at the foul line. You see the fans flopping as he shoots his free throw. But he's done a Smart's done a good job today overall. Keeping his composure, got away with that flagrant one early second half. But otherwise, he's played really well. Look at that. That's what he does. Big time steal. Marcus Smart at the rim lays it in, and the Cowboys lead this one by a point. That's wow. what he does, John. There's nobody better in the conference defending than he than he is. Great anticipation. Diag inside. And Nash with a huge rebound under three to go. And the road team by one. A 7 0 run. And Brown knocks it down. Three point lead. Markel Brown kind of weaving through traffic and then right there near the top of the key was able to hit that jump shot. Well, part of this run was fueled by this steal by Marcus Smart. Watch the anticipation, John, with the left hand. He'll go the other way. And as much as we praise Smart for an outstanding game tonight, it's been his sidekick, Markel Brown, who has 19 points as well. Got 19 points and 10 rebounds, a double double for Markel Brown. All right, time now for our Radio Shack Do It Together and the Iowa State seniors out there on the court. DeAndre Kane, Melvin Edgem, they were able to do it together. Brought to you by Radio Shack, doing it all season long, those two seniors. Well, and Kane, what a gift from God sent he had for the Cyclone team, and he's fit right in perfectly. With Ho Hoiberg Club. Yang backs down, has it blocked by Murphy. Huge play there for the Cowboys on the defensive end. Out of bounds, it stays with Oak State. Murphy did a really good job of staying vertical, John. Yang tried to initiate the contact, but Murphy just backed up and used his money. Under 10 on 
the shot clock. Smart handy. Watch the roll by Nash now. He's dangerous there. Smart of three. Kane with the basketball. Kane. And after the miss, almost the travel, they get it trapped. Markel Brown arguing with Doug Sermons. Well, Hogue missed an easy point blank opportunity to score. Watch this. Hogue's inside, gets away with the push off. And he just kind of did a little shuffle with those feet. They're going to get a foul on Marcus Smart, his fourth. It'll be a one and one spot. Well, the arc of this story has been interesting. Cowboys led for almost all of the first half, built it up to as many as 16 in the second half. Cowboys gave it up as the Cyclones came back to lead by as many as six. And now it's a two-point game after Kane hits the front end of the one and one, and Melvin Edgem is sitting as he has fouled out. Boy, the job that DeAndre Kane has done, John, from the very start of the season. You know, he came in here with a checkered reputation for Marshall after three seasons. But you talk to the coaching staff, and uh, he's been a great teammate, and what an outstanding player. Got them both one point game. Under 90 seconds to go here in Hill. Double team Nash, he's a good passer. Nash inside, puts it up, won't go. Niang with it. Look at Off this. The head, ho! Oh. And he's down. Boy, Nash did everything he could right here. Watch him back down, ho. Watch ho hold his ground. Really good right there, just couldn't make it. Niang with the look up the floor. Dustin Hogue's been quiet today. He's a junior from Yonkers, New York. 63% from the free throw line. He is the third leading rebounder in this conference. See the spin. Hogue a chance to tie it. Now, if you Travis Ford, you're not going to go two for one, are you? Because they could get two possessions here. I doubt they will. Flips it up and he's fouled. Wow. And more importantly, John, they'll get another possession. <laughs> Number four on Niang. Watch smart now. You know, Niang slid slightly to the right and a good job by Smart. That's his job. Get mad at him all you want. That's what he's supposed to do. Timeout called as we keep it right here. One point game with Oklahoma State up by one. John Chambi and Fran Priscilla. What'd you think of the call? I thought it was a good call. Okay, Smart initiated the contact. Niang was really never set. If you watch the tape, he slid slightly to his right. And it's a smart play, no pun intended, sure. for a guy that will be an actor on occasion. But that's what he does. He got to the line. Now they've got a chance to go up to. Fred Hoiberg's got a timeout. Uh, 
Right now you play through Niang or Kane. I like Kane because Kane can get to the basket and make plays for everybody else. Niang can as well, but he's in tight quarters in the low post where he can be double teamed. Part of the storyline today, Marcus Smart really asserting his will defensively. He's made some big impact, impact plays on that end of the court. Well, let's face it, John, he's been great both ways. And, uh, you know, this was a game that uh, we circled on our calendar back in January. An important game, and it's lived up to that point. Got them both. Red Hoiberg also excellent at a timeout, so let's see what they draw up. There's a drive. And Kane rejected to the corner. Marcus Smart gets back. Wow, Naz Long had a really good look at that. Absolutely. Him. Terrific block inside, and Long was wide open. And now Smart has a chance to, if not shut the door, close it almost all the way. Great rim protection right there by Kamari Murphy. The smart foul. This is a one in one spot. Cyclones pulling their way back to lead by as many as six. But they have now gone almost five and a half minutes without a field goal. Their last field goal, 557 mark for Iowa State, and no edge him as he's been sitting having fouled out. Big free throw right here. Makes it a two possession game. Let's see now. Red Hoiberg's got a lot of things up his sleeve as far as three point shots. There's a foul, it won't matter. Christian Sager fouls Matt Thomas. And that will be team foul number nine. So it's one and one. At least that's what they just announced. No. Nope. Thomas with a reputation of being a great shooter in high school. It's actually going to be number 10, so it's a two shot foul. That'll take a little heat off of him. Thomas, 60, you see the numbers there, 68% on the season. I'm going to correct it one more time, Fran. I got it right the first time about three minutes ago. It's one and one. Remember, still coming up tonight, ESPN Saturday Primetime, presented by DirecTV. You got Indiana and Michigan at 6 Eastern, and then the Biggie at 9 Eastern, the rematch, number 14, North Carolina, number 4, Duke. ESPN Saturday Primetime, presented by DirecTV. Duke, North Carolina, one of the best rivalries in all of sports. Well, you can say that this guy has been a polarizing figure, Marcus Smart, around the Big 12. There's not a coach in the league that wouldn't love him on his team. He's the guy you hate if he's on the other team. But he is delivered today. It's one out of two, and again, it's a two possession game. Could be on Smart. That is on Marcus Smart. That's number five. They played really well today. Now you mentioned the defense, John. The 27 points was uh, only part of the story. He guarded Edgem some. He guarded Kane some. That big steal on Kane late. By the way, Baylor won at Kansas State today. We just got that score, so. Talk about a tough place to win. Oh, yeah. And how about Baylor? They looked like they were cooked about a month ago, three weeks ago. Both these teams 
Baylor and Oklahoma State were considered, I think after Kansas, two of the elite teams in the Big 12. And three weeks ago, I think a lot of people felt those teams might be done. So Baylor now 9-9. Nine nine. Now if he makes the second one, John, it's got to be a quick steal and foul. And if you're Travis Ford, you'd love to get the ball into Phil Forte's hands. So I would almost face guard Forte. See, if he catches the ball. Nah. Oh, did they get possession error or a foul? And they both possession error. But it's going to be Oklahoma State's ball. Now the difference is it'll be deep corner and the inbounder cannot run the floor. Travis Ford calls time. Two point game. Things still interesting here in Ames. Back and forth we went in this one. Take a look now. Forte catches this ball. And instead of electing a foul right away, they tie him up. And so that ball will be inbounded in the deep corner. The inbounder cannot run like after you could on a made basket or free throw. It's one of those things where for Phil Forte, I'm sure he's waiting, waiting, waiting for them to foul, and then they don't foul, and all of a sudden the hands come in, grab exactly. the basketball. Now, it's amazing how many times a game can be decided on just inbounding this basketball, something you should work on every day of the season, special situation. Time and score. Time and score, so let's see what we've got here. This is one of those cases, and we saw this against uh, in, the, in the Baylor Oklahoma State game when Oklahoma State tied it in regulation. If you're Iowa State, you want to bring all five white jerseys up towards midcourt and bait Oklahoma State to throw the ball deep. It's almost trying like trying to get an, a completion in the red zone. Right. If they throw it out of bounds down the floor, you maintain possession underneath your basket. Offensively, sometimes I would throw the hump home run ball here, knowing they're bringing everybody up. So let's take a look. This looks like Forte is going to scream and come back to the ball. Watch Forte. He screams and comes back to the ball. And they foul him. Just as you said, sir. Done this a couple times. <laughs> You've watched this team seen, a couple of times. Oh, that too, yep. Yep. It just makes sense. How do you get the ball to your best free throw shooter? the biggie right here to make it a two possession game. I mentioned earlier Fred Hoiberg back in 95 lost on his senior day so. Oh here it is. They got a chance at it. Long. Today, again, history repeating itself. Phil Forte doesn't miss a lot of free throws, but he missed three in this game, including the biggest one of all. That was something else. Triple OT where they met Stillwater. And we go to overtime here. That sign says it all. Now remember, 
As we play the extra five, no Edgem for Iowa State, no Smart for Oklahoma State. That's a that's a tough trade-off both ways, you know. <laughs> I don't know who gets the better of it. Although I know that Kane is the best facilitator on the court left. Tell the story. George Niang just looked over. I was laughing to myself, and he saw me. And he just shook his head. Sager now. Now remember, John. This team's played without Smart for three games, and Markel Brown and Nash are guys that can take over. Four tail try. Got it. How cool is that? Got a feeling you want to make up for that free throw. Yeah, you had a chance to put the game away. But it has long three pointers to tie it up. And banks it in. Been a great crowd all afternoon long. Got Kane. He wide open. You know, they've been shooting that shot all season long, but boy, would I love to see them attack the paint. Forte, Travis Ford, not happy with that. Shot clock under 10, Brown off balance. And they get a foul on Nia. And that's his fifth. And that's the second time Niang has fouled a jump shooter in the second half. Frustrated by that call. Uh, you just got to know better, especially with the clock running down. What they said was he got him on the uh, elbow. Looked like he did from where I saw that. What about you? From that angle, it was hard for me to tell. I, if he did, it was. Well, you just got to stay away from the shooter. You got to know the clock is running down to it. And if he makes it, big deal. Because he's more valuable to his team on the floor yep. instead of waving a towel. So the Cyclones have lost Edgeman Nia. No mark is smart. He's fouled out for Oklahoma State. Brown continuing what has been a fabulous career, top 10 in scoring in the history of a program that's had some great players. An amazing last 12 games into this one, he's averaged 39 minutes. That triple overtime loss, he played 54 of 55 minutes. Get back and help out Kane. Some big plays in the second half. You know what I like about that? They chased him off the screen, but he didn't settle. He just took it right to the rim. Offensive 
offensive foul. So that's on Kamari Murphy. Go back to another play, John. Watch Long come off that curl. Usually he's comfortable shooting the three, and he surprised Murphy a little bit. Murphy was out there to hedge on the screen, and Long took it right to the rim, and then Murphy fouled on the other end. Andre Cade's been fairly quiet of late. Draws a foul from Markel Brown. And that's what Kane should do. Put the ball on the floor, and if you do draw defense, kick it. But a couple times in the second half and overtime, Iowa State settled for the contested three. Look at Edgem. So their other senior, along with Tyler Ellerman, DeAndre Kane at the stripe. Side now. Do they double team him? Back and down, back and down, short of that shot. Nash couldn't get the ball any closer, John, and he's ruining that miss right now as he runs up the court. Dante Morris with Forte on him. They run some block, and now it's in the hands of Kane, as it should be. Long to pull up. And they get the foul. Well, Long's ability to shoot the three forced that defender to raise up, and Long was smart enough to go with the one bounce by him. That foul on Kamari Murphy is fourth. A young man that was a proud Canadian today as they played O Canada on senior day for Melvin Edgem, a man from the suburbs of Toronto. You know, I'd go back to Nash again. He got the ball so deep last time. Yeah, you like your chances if he gets it that deep. Yeah. The bucket lays it in to tie it up. That ain't a bad second option either. <laughs> yeah, now you can milk this and two for one here. Pain hesitation. And he'll shoot two. The beauty in that right there. They shot the ball early enough, and regardless of what happens on the Oklahoma State end, unless they really shoot it quickly, they'll get two possessions. Kamari Murphy absorbing his fifth foul, so he's done. Murphy and Smart have fouled out for the Cowboys. Edgem and Niang for the Cyclones. You know, this is the type of game where both teams showed a lot of grit, a lot of fight. I mean, you're talking about Iowa State was down by as many as 16. They come all the way back. This place starts getting loud. If you're the Cowboys, you're down six. You could kind of go away, but they didn't. No, they didn't. Marcus Smart was outstanding down the stretch. And you know what's amazing, John? This game may turn on a missed free throw by one of the best free throw shooters in college basketball. And this is exactly the kind of game we talked about at the very beginning. Both teams ranked in the top 10 early in the year. Both teams fighting for postseason positioning. Both teams with stars who played well. And this is just a microcosm of what next week will be in Kansas City. It'll be a lot of fun. See the numbers for Kane. He scored 20 or more now five of his last six games. Wow, missed the bolt. Okay. I got 
two possessions. Shoot two. You know what I liked about that? Iowa State switched. They had a mismatch inside. Long on Nash, but Brown had a mismatch on the perimeter as well. Foul on Nash Long is first. Cyclones take a timeout. Uh, if you missed the way we got to overtime, pretty amazing stuff. First part was Forte missing the free throw, and then Naz Long buries this. Then we head to the extra session. Long hit the same type of shot about a month ago and still wanted to force a third overtime. But right now, Markel Brown on the line. You see the trends back and forth, John. Brown with a chance to put Cowboys up two, and Iowa State will have the basketball. And again, nothing new for Iowa State in terms of coming back. Talking about a team that's won, what, nine times, went down seven or more points. And the only loss in this building this season was to Kansas early in the year. Fred Hoiberg's done such a good job with this program, putting it together in unique fashion, kind of cobbling together a roster with high school guys. He's gone a junior college route as well, and then taking the transfers that have made a big impact in this now his fourth year. Without a doubt, 10 transfers, a number of them doing very well. Chris Babb now with the Boston Celtics. He was a transfer from Penn State. Well, remember ESPN's journey to the tourney features one of the best rivalries in all of sports. It comes your way tonight, 9 Eastern. The rematch comes to you from Cameron Indoor Stadium, number 14, North Carolina, number 4, Duke. 32 straight home wins for Mike Krzyzewski's team. They are coming off a loss. Meanwhile, Roy Williams group red hot. 12 straight victories. And Marcus Page has been outstanding from really the very beginning of the season for Roy Williams, not just in ACC play. I did the Be Belmont game when they lost at, at home. home. Yeah. Missed a bunch of free throws. It's been their Achilles heel all year. Iowa State, John, with four players on the floor that were not in uniform a year ago, and Nas Long, the fifth, played sparingly. Something he does, but Kane stayed with it. They went right at Brown. They cleared the middle of the floor. And watch Kane now. The design was just to give him room to drive. Look how open the middle of the floor is. Brown does what he does well, and then Kane with the stick to itiveness. So DeAndre Kane taking matters into his own hands. After the block, puts it in. And the senior from Pittsburgh trying to lead the Cyclones to a win in overtime at home. One thing I liked about Travis Ford's team this year, John, at full strength, is that he does a real good job of putting his good offensive players in the right positions. So that's Nash in the low post on the right block. Or don't be surprised if they open up the floor for Brown, much like Fred Hoiberg did for Kane. Here it is. It's going to be a high ball screen. Brown spins. Kane hit. 
And they'll march it down the other end. Well, and here's the ISO that we talked about. Came off the ball screen. It's created a little space on the switch. And then you see Hogue, he just kept backing up, John. I got news for you. This game's long way from over. DeAndre Kane, by the way, 24 points. Now 2,005 in his career. That's a pretty amazing college career. If he makes the second, we're at the point on the clock where you have to shoot the three here, especially because you're out of timeouts. You can't play the two for three game. Iowa State uses the timeout to set the defense. So three point game, 11.7 to go. And then the question becomes down the other way do you foul? For most coaches, it starts to become, you know, I guess it comes into their vision or their thought process under 10 seconds. I think Fred Hoiberg will foul. I think Travis Ford's going to take the ball out the length of the floor and he's going to push it. And at some point, in the middle of the floor, Iowa State will foul. I don't think they want to gamble, John, with Forte or Brown getting a clean look. And then if you foul, you, you, you must get the rebound. Markel Brown, since the break, has been very good. Well, Marcus Smart started off. He had an outstanding game before fouling out. But Markel Brown, who's been the trusty sidekick, and in fact, he's come out of the shadows this season as a senior and been used down the stretch and in overtime for Oklahoma State. But don't forget that Forte, if they do get it into the half court, spreads the floor to where Brown might be the guy actually shooting the three because of the danger of Forte. I think if you're Iowa State right here, you pick up full and then you foul at half court. Marcus Smart can only watch, fouled out. Towards the end of regulation. Maury Murphy is fouled out. Edgem and Niang after Iowa State. And they do foul. Now, there's a lot of time on this clock. Eight seconds is a little high. I like the idea of fouling. But if Brown can make one or two, Iowa State will get the ball in. They'll get fouled. And there's a lot of time. Both on the state to come back, John. Well, it's basically the possibility that that sequence we just saw to play itself out again. Exactly. Exactly. There's enough time for that to happen. One point game. Now the press. Get it in cleanly, and then they'll foul. So marching down to the other end, it'll be the freshman from Wisconsin, Matt Thomas. This is a young man that was a top 100 player, a prolific shooter in high school, one of the best. He has been up and down with his confidence all season long. And remember, he missed the last free throw late in regulation. Yeah, front end of the one and one. See now, if he makes both, Fred Hoiberg will foul again. But if you're Oklahoma State, you must be prepared for the miss and push this up the floor. Plenty of time to go rim to rim. Question's going to be is it Brown or Nash that will handle it off the miss? Same strategy now. Foul. This is more problematic now for Oklahoma State. This is where you think about making the first and probably needing to miss the second. And I always ask this question. Have you worked on a missed free throw situation to get a shot in these circumstances?
Okay, now you have to miss, and it's got to be a tip out. And Phil Forte should stay at the top of the key and run to the side of the miss. It looks like they have a set play. Okay, there it is. 1.7 to go. And it looks like DeAndre came the Cyclones. are going to get out of here with an overtime win. Tell you what, great miss by Brown. Did Matt Thomas hold uh, Brian Williams' arm down? He did. And Brian Williams got at least a piece of it. I mean, that play is difficult to pull off. Well, I'll tell you, it was really executed. Yeah. I, I, I didn't see it until the second replay of Matt Thomas had a piece of the arm. I couldn't tell from that angle. Yeah, it's hard to say. in overtime on senior day 85 81 the final here at Hilton up next it's Missouri and Tennessee for Fran Priscilla and our entire crew I'm John Shelby thanks for joining us here in Ames Iowa State wins it in overtime 85 to 81 time now to send it out to Knoxville we turn it over to Mark Jones and Jimmy Dykes.